Welcome to the November the 13th, 1990 taping of It Happened in Grand Prairie. And this is our history tape number 133. And as we introduce a very special couple to bring you the history of Grand Prairie from their point of view, we're delighted to welcome to the set today, Mr. and Mrs. Jack Lumpkin. And welcome. We're so glad, Bobby Lumpkin, to have you with us. Delighted to have you with us, my dear. Thank you. And Jack Lumpkin, we're glad to have you on this history you. show, young man. Of course, both of you all have been on our It's Happening in Grand Prairie in different ways because y'all are very important to the city of Grand Prairie in making things happen. But on this history tape, we'd like for you to help us uh, establish your genealogy and tell a little bit about the history of the past. And Bobby, we're going to start with you first. And would you look right out into your camera and uh, give us a little bit of information about your family, your mother and daddy's name, your talk about your brothers and sisters, and where they lived, and all the good stuff, would you? All right. I, my father, mother was Lula Ira Thompson Pearson. My father was Walter Edwin Pearson. And we, I was uh, brought up in a little community, a personal community, out of Corsicana. All right. And uh, from there I went to... What was the little community near Corsicana? Pursley. Spell it? P-U-R-S-L-E-Y. All right. That is great. A wonderful little community. And what county is Corsicana and Pursley in? Navarro. In Navarro County. Right. Okay. All right. Now continue. I have... Uh, I had three brothers and three sisters. My oldest brother was, is Walter uh, Travis Pearson, who lives in Dallas, retired from the Federal Reserve Bank. My uh, sister Eunice passed away in 63. She was vice president of the bank in, in May Bank. And uh, my uh, second brother is, is Edwin Pearson. He's retired uh, from the transportation in Washington, D.C. and lives at Cedar Creek Lake. Wonderful. And my other sister, Pat, by the way, was used to live in Grand Prairie years ago. She has passed away in 82. Okay. And then um, just coming right on down the line. That's good. And myself, of course, everybody thinks my name is Bobby, but it's Mary E. And uh, of course, uh, I came to Grand Prairie in, I hate to say it, but it's 1943. 1943, right. that was a good year. I uh, graduated from uh, Maybank High School and then went to college at Denton, which was then TSCW, which is now TWU. Okay. And uh, been in Grand Prairie here for all these years. And then I, uh, my other sister is, lives, is Louise, and she lives, she and her husband live in Austin, and he's retired from his a colonel from the Air Force and also from Texas Employment Commission. Okay. And uh, then my youngest brother is Wayne Pearson who lives in Dallas and he's an attorney. That is great. That's a and wonderful... That's, that's a whole bunch of us. That's a whole <laughs> bunch, isn't it? And to be uh, raised around Pursley mm -hmm. and to go to school. Uh, let's talk about, did you go to school in Pursley? Went there until the 10th grade and they uh, did not that's as far as you could go. All right, and I want to talk about the little 10 grade school that you had in Pursley. Mm -hmm. I'd like for you to look out and maybe tell us something about going to school out in the country, how you got to school, uh, maybe your favorite teacher, something exciting that happened in Pursley. Well, uh, it's been so long ago about forgotten it. But anyway, we, of course, we live, uh, Pursley is about 15 miles from Corsicano. All right. And uh, we only had, then we had just had muddy roads and you mm -hmm. you walked to school and uh, you took your lunch in a little paper sack. And um, I remember, mom, I used to play basketball. We had a basketball team and I enjoyed that. And we also uh, went act plays. All right. And I always liked to be in those. All right. And do you remember your favorite teacher? How many were in your class? Well, we, I graduated from the seventh grade in Blooming from Blooming Grove, and then I graduated from the 10th grade with, there were three in our class. 
three in your class. Three in my class. Isn't that exciting? Now, I knew that that would uh, be a good point, mm -hmm. but then after you, after you left, uh, uh, when there were three in your class, was that from Pursley? From Pursley. That was a Pursley And uh, the reason I went to Maybank to school is because at that time, Pursley had not consolidated with Dawson. I see. And I had no way to go to Corsicana, so my sister took, took me in and mm -hmm. I lived with them and finished high school there. And finished high school there. And now that was at Maybach. That was at Maybach. All right. And that's in super collider country, oh, isn't yes. it? Oh, <laughs> yeah, it's wonderful. And then tell us a little bit after you left um, uh, that area and went to Denton, what was the teacher or someone that inspired you to go to Denton, Bobby? Or was it your parents? It or? was my sister. <laughs> All right. Now, let's, let's get this credit going. My oldest sister. She, yes. she, you didn't say no. If, you, if she said for you to go, you went. I see. And oh. she made it possible for me to go. Oh, isn't that wonderful? It sure was. She was a wonderful sister. Okay. And so then you decided to go uh, insistently uh, to, uh, to Denton, and you enrolled in college. And tell me about studying in Denton about in those years. Well, I, I remember one thing that that uh, about I took accounting. Mm -hmm. I was taking business education, mm -hmm. and I uh, one of our our main a part of our grade was going to be our um, uh, workbook. Mm -hmm. Well, I got mine all worked up, and somebody it, it got stolen, and that was going to be half of your grade. Yes. And I finally at the last, it, it showed up. But I told my uh, professor, Dr. Boyer, I said, if you'll just pass me, <laughs> I guarantee you I'll never keep a set of books. And the first thing I did was go to work in the bank as a bookkeeper. <laughs> <laughs> Been keeping books ever since. Keeping books ever since. That's wonderful. Um, I'm going to hold you in abeyance for a few minutes. Okay. Now, let's, let's get to Jack. Jack Lumpkin. Tell us a little bit about your family genealogy, looking out into your camera, and let's, let's see where you come from. Talk a little bit about your parents. My mother was Julia Francis O'Connor Lumpkin. <clears throat> My father was, <clears throat> excuse me, Thomas Fulton Lumpkin. And I was born in Tyler, Texas. Okay. And we lived there until I was about three years old, and that was during the Depression, and we moved to Naples, Texas. All right. My father was a railroad man, worked for the Cotton Belt Railroad, and at that time he was on layoff, so he couldn't get any work in Tyler, so he moved to Commerce and kind of sponged off one of his cousins that had some rent property. She let us live there, I think, rent-free for, for a while until he got back to work. And uh, he did get recalled uh, to go back to work for the railroad in 1935, and we moved from Naples to Commerce, Texas. All right. And I was six and a half years old at that time. I went to school in Commerce, Texas, and graduated from Commerce High School, 1945. Okay. I enrolled in East Texas State Teachers College for the summer semesters. And after I finished the summer semesters, well, I, <clears throat> I was working regular for the railroad at the time as a clerk. And uh, I got bumped off the job that I was on in commerce, and I had to leave, either leave town and go on another job or, or quit and finish school. So I, I elected to quit school and, and pursue my railroad career. And it, the first year I was with, uh, after I got out of the commerce, I was in eight different towns in a one-year time because it got, you know, got bumped around because they didn't have enough seniority to hold a job yes. too long in any one place. But I moved to Dallas in the latter part of 45, early part of 46, and I've been in this area ever since. All right. All right, and um, when you came to the Dallas area, what brought you to the Dallas area? Was it the train business or what? Yes, it was railroad. I was with the railroad, and uh, I bid on a job and I got it. I didn't have any earthly idea that I would get it, but I submitted a bid and I got it and I was assigned to it and I, and I was able to stay in, in the Dallas area 
all the time that I was with the railroad, which I was with them nine and a half years. All right, was this still the Continental Railroad? Cotton Belt. Cotton Belt. See, which is no longer in existence. Okay. The Cotton Belt Railroad. I remember hearing about that. All right, now, Bobby, let's get back to you. Tell me what brought you to Grand Prairie, Texas. Okay. I'll, in 1943 ish. I had um, an offer, a, a job at the Grand Prairie State Bank All right. here, and one at the um, uh, bank in Oak Cliff, Oak Cliff Bank and Trust. All right. And I chose Grand Prairie because it paid me $10 more a month. <laughs> That's great. So I, I worked, um, went to work for the Grand Prairie State Bank, and, uh, which no longer exists, but it was here for many, many years. All right, we need to talk about the Grand Prairie State Bank. Who was the person in charge that hired you? For whom did you work? And name some of the people that were associated with the bank at that time, so let's get a little pattern okay. going there. Mr. G.W. Bingham was president of the bank that uh -huh. hired me. And Ernest Avery, who is now deceased, was uh, the vice president there at that time. And uh, Derwood Sutton was still with the bank, but he was in the service. Okay. And um, of course, Maude Crawford was there when I first came. All right. And Beth Ray Speck at that time, but it was, uh, you know, McLean. And uh, let's see, Kathleen. Bean Mower, mm -hmm. and um, and when I came to the bank, it wasn't even a million dollar bank. I remember qu quite well the day that it it became a million dollar bank, and we got so excited. Uh, when I w started working there, they told me he's, they said, "Now you're going to be surprised when North American payday is on Friday." And, and when they all start coming in here. And at that time, the bank was all open, you know. We didn't have, the bookkeeping wasn't behind walls and all yes. that. And I tell you, when that 12 o'clock came, I looked up and they were just swarming in that bank. Looked out and they were running down the street. And it was quite a sight. Of course, nowadays, we do, you have all that room and all that, you don't have, it, it's not, it isn't like that now. Bobby, I'd like you to tell us about working in the bank is important. I want to know where the bank was located and what building, what building is in there in 1990 where it stood at that time. The Independent Savings and Loan. It was located at, on the corner of um, Center and Main Street. Mm -hmm. On the northeast corner? On the north, on the no, southeast corner. No, on, northeast. It's on North, the no, northeast, northeast corner. corner. That's right. Corner. Northeast corner. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Down the street is the uh, uptown theater right. and all the good stuff. Right. Okay. And Joe Campbell's office is on all that right. same that's side. That's true. And it was located there on the corner. Uh -huh. Okay. It was all right. There for many years until they built the new bank up here, mm -hmm. and uh, then by this time Derwood Sutton and Mr. Turner had bought the bank. All right. And While you were still, still working? working there, Mr. Turner bought the bank. He bought the bank then from, from Mr. Mr. Bingham. Bingham. Uh -huh. Okay. Do you remember uh -huh. what year that was? That's all right if uh, you can't see. remember the year. I would say it was probably around 19 and before 19, around the early part of 1950, maybe a little earlier than that. What was it like to change bosses from Mr. Bingham to mm -hmm. Mr. G. H. Turner? We we don't have anyone to talk about Mr. Turner because he has had no children, and if you know anything about that, if he was good, bad, or indifferent, we'd like to know what it was like to change bosses. Well, it was a little different because uh, I got real close to the Bingham family. Yes. I was, I felt like I was part of them. Yes. And um, I, when they took off on two o'clock in the afternoon to go up to Lake Dallas, I went to. <laughs> but I couldn't do that when Mr. Turner came. All right. But he and I ended up with the biggest, big buddies. All right. He was a very, very good boss. Yes, he was. He, uh, sure, he was a fine man. He was a philanthropic uh, person here in Grand Prairie, Texas. Many things that's, happened because of his generosity. That's, that's exactly right. All right. All right. How long did you stay at the bank? What happened to you after the bank? Now, you're going to... We're getting close to when... I want to find out when you and Jack met. <laughs> All right. I worked at the Grand Prairie State from 1943. I was 
uh, assistant cashier there. And when, one thing that Mr. Turner, I remember about Mr. Turner, they, when they made the, uh, the stationery, he, um, mm -hmm. he uh, told them to be sure that on the stationery put Mary E, but in the, in the Prince's Bobby, because no one would know, know who, who you are. Mary E was. But uh, I worked there until 1957. And then I had to, uh, I t told, went and told Irwood, of course, at that time my first husband had passed away and I had taken over the business. Yes. And I went in one day and I told Irwood, I said, I'd like to take a leave of absence. All right. And uh, he said, well, I've been wanting to tell you that, but I was afraid that you would think I wanted you to quit because he said, your investment's down there at the business. But anyway, I worked there until 1957. All right. And, um, he, and when they built the new bank, he had called me and asked me, he said, would you like to come up and work the first week in the new bank? Yes. So I did. And from then on, I, uh, for several uh, summers, I worked, uh, fell in for the girl that took my place. I'd go up, when she was on vacation, I'd go up there and work in her place. Till one day, he called me to come up and teach Angela. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I, I was sitting there one day and helping her, and I, and I told her, I said, you know, it just dawned on me. I'm just here teaching myself out of a job, and I was never called back again. <laughs> <laughs> that was wonderful, but when you did teach Angela the banking business, you did a good job. Well, she's a great yeah, girl. Yes, she's a wonderful girl. All right, and so then after you left the bank, then you started operating your own business, which was a Lewis, Lewis Transfer and Storage. storage. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And then subsequently you sold that? I, I operated it, owned and operated it until 1965, and then I sold it to uh, uh, Frank Zalkowski, who's Central Transfer and Storage in Dallas. Uh -huh. And I am still working for the same company, except our company is called Arlington Moving Systems. Mm -hmm. That is wonderful. You have spent a, almost a lifetime then in the moving business without moving too far. That's right. <laughs> All right. Now, let's get back to Jack. We're going to let you rest a minute. Jack. All right. What brought you to Grand Prairie, young man, and how did you meet Bobby? Well, what brought me to Grand Prairie was, was Bobby. All right. Uh, we met uh, through a mutual friend, uh, a lady that worked for the, uh, she was transportation officer at the Naval, Naval Air Station. All right. And of course she and Bobby were uh, acquainted through the, you know, the moving business and the transportation officer at the Naval base has a lot in common, you know. They, yes, they do. They, they do a lot of business together. Well, I had met this lady through a uh, the freight business. See, I was in the freight business all my life. And yes. at that time that I met this lady that introduced us, we were at a function, a transportation function. And she told me, she said, well, I have a lovely, lovely friend that, uh, that I think that you and her would hit it off real well. And I had just lost my wife uh, a short time before that after marriage of 22 years, she passed away with cancer. And uh, so I told her, I said, well, I'd, I'd love to meet her. So uh, she uh, set up an, uh, an arrangement where we would meet, you know, cross paths. And, and uh, we, uh, first night we met, we were, we were dancing. And we, after I, <laughs> after, I met, after I met her and was introduced properly and so forth and so on, well, I don't think we sat down the rest of the night. We danced every dance. And it just, it, it was, basically it was love at first sight and, and on both of our parts. Oh, that we went good. together for a year prior to marrying. And mm -hmm. uh, at the time when we married, well, I elected to sell my home in Mesquite and move to Grand Prairie. Yes, that was a wise choice, yes, Jack Lunkin. Very much so. Very wise choice. All right, now I'd like for you to tell us some of the, also some of the service clubs, some of the things that you've uh, been involved in while you're here in Grand Prairie because I know that you're a mover and a shaker with the Foggy River Boys and tell me how you got involved in all that good stuff. Well, I was a member of the Op Evening Optimist Club for 10 years and we uh, were needing a service project to make some money for our uh, uh, projects, you know, for the youth of Grand Prairie. and. Uh, we were struggling trying to trying to make some by running concession stands at uh, various softball diamonds. We were making, you know, a little money, but not nothing to really speak of. 
So Bobby and I uh, love Branson, Missouri. We go up to Branson twice a year, each year, spend a week, 10 days in the spring, a week, 10 days in the fall. And we got to, to know a lot of the people up there on a personal basis, and especially the people in the show business. And our, our favorite group was the Foggy River Boys. And uh, they travel during the uh, off season, which their off season is the 1st of November through the uh, end of April. And they travel all over the country putting on shows for clubs, churches, and you know, uh, service organizations for fundraisers. So I come up with the idea, I said, well, we need to do something to make some money. And this, this Foggy River Boys group had been going to Maybank, Texas for nine years in a mm -hmm. row. They were sponsored by the Maybank Lions Club. And I figured if the little town of Maybank and a little club like the Lions Club in Maybank could put on something like that, well, surely a, a town the size of Grand Prairie and the Optimist Club, of, uh, Evening Optimist Club could put, a, put something together that could make some money. So I uh, did a lot of research. I talked to people in Maybank about it. I talked to the people in Dallas that had sponsored the Fogger River Boys. I talked to the Fogger River Boys, uh, the uh, manager who handles all the road shows. I asked him all the ins and outs about what you have to do, how much money it costs to put on a show. You know, all the, all the things, the pertinent things that you need to know. And so, and then I put a package together and I presented it to my club. And uh, at first, of course, they were a little reluctant, you know, because of, of the upfront money, you know, that you have to yes. uh, guarantee the entertainers. But uh, we, uh, <clears throat> we did do this the first year, which was 1984. Mm -hmm. And it was very, very successful. And they have continued to do so, uh, put on a show each. February, and the last Friday of February of every year, they've, they've come down here and put on a wonderful show for the citizens of Grand Prairie mm -hmm. and all the benefits, all the, all the monies that's made after expenses are paid out is turned back to the youth of Grand Prairie. Oh, that is wonderful. And scholarships, baseball teams, softball teams, soccer teams, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, Cub Scouts, you name it, they've got All the good stuff. They've got about a... 14 ongoing projects all the time that requires money. All right. Now, other than the optimist in doing this, uh, are there any other clubs or organizations? I notice you're wearing a pen. <clears throat> well, I'm a, I'm a mason. I'm and a 32nd degree mason, and I'm also a shriner. Okay. I belong to the uh, local Grand Prairie Shrine Club. Okay. I, I participate in the uh, bucket brigade each year to help the cripple and burn children. Okay. That's great. You do a lots of good outreach. All right, Bobby, how about the clubs that you belong to? I know that you beat the drum for one a few minutes ago. Tell us about uh, your outreach. Well, I, just, I guess I've belonged to about every club in Grand Prairie. I've been a member of the Osteroptimus Club since 1953. Mm -hmm. I've past president and held all the offices, and I've also been belonged to the BNPW Club. Uh, the Women's Division, the uh, Federation of Women's Club, the uh, Sorority Beta Sigma Phi, and um, what others here? That's a bunch. That's isn't a it? bunch. All right. All right. Do either one of you all have any children? Yes. I have uh, two daughters. Wonderful. My oldest daughter lives in uh, Dallas. No, Garland now. She just recently bought a bought a home. Okay. She works for UPS. She's 34 years old. Would you like to name her? Her name is Phyllis Deborah Lumpkin. Wonderful. And your other? My youngest daughter is uh, Annette Fedford. She lives in Omaha, Nebraska. She has three beautiful, wonderful children. We have a granddaughter 15, a granddaughter 13, and a grandson 12. Oh, that's magnificent. So, Bobby, you got lots of Christmas shopping to do. That's right. All of the good things. When he, when he got me, he, uh, he just got me. But when I got him, I got children, grandchildren, and all. Isn't that wonderful? It was. You bet. All right. Bobby, we have a few minutes left. And I'd like for you to just uh, look out and tell the people how exciting it's been to live in Grand Prairie, Texas, and uh, how long you plan to stay here until you leave this earth. Well, it's, it's been 
great. This Green Prairie is a, uh, a great place to live, I think. Of course, I know that, that by that, that I've, how long I've lived here. And as far as I know, I'll live here until I take my last trip home. That's it. That's wonderful. And um, Jack, what do you think about the Grand Prairie when you first moved here compared to the Grand Prairie of today, about the changes in it? Look, we have about a minute or so to talk. Well, I think the Grand Prairie has made quite a bit of progress in the last 12, 12 and a half years. Uh, when I first moved to Grand Prairie, of course, I was a total stranger. But I, I, within a period of uh, three months, I, know, I knew more people in Grand Prairie than I did in 22 years in Mesquite because it's di they were di different people. They were, they were friendly. They were outgoing. And of course, we were associated with the First United Methodist Church, and we were members there. And uh, they took, uh, took me and Bobby in with open arms, even though she was a Baptist, you know, they, <laughs> they accepted her. But anyway, they, they made me feel welcome, made me feel at home, and which I had never felt that way previously. I, I, I just didn't have, I just didn't have a good feeling, you know, about my, my town that I lived in. It was, of course, at that time, Mesquite was classified as a bedroom community, you know. Yes. People hitting out, that's all they were doing. It was going to work and coming back and going to sleep and back and forth. Well, Grand Prairie's got lots of things going for it. And I think they've made a lot of progress in the, in the past 12 years. Yes. And Jack, I know that um, you are retired. And you have Bobby working, and that's good. That's right. Also, you've had some illness, and uh, you came on this show today knowing full well that you spent yesterday taking tests and all of the good stuff. And you said, well, I may not be there on time. And I said, no, Jack, you're going to be there tomorrow. Everything's going to be all right. And isn't that wonderful? That's right. It is. Great. Well, I want to thank you, too, very much for taking the time to come and share about your life in Grand Prairie, Texas, and about some of the history that led up to what brought you to Grand Prairie. We want to thank you for the many hours that you give. Jack mans the telephone not only for the optimist, but for the seroptimist when we bring the Texans. And I know that is one of our favorite groups, mm -hmm. even though the Foggy River Boys are wonderful too. We want to thank you for what you do for our city. Thank and you. And appreciate it very much. They're both our favorites. Both your favorites. Both our favorites. It's almost a tie. That's right. And this is Ruthie Jackson reminding you that history is as we live and do. Thank you.